ragazzi. Siete Al lavoro. Pronti? People are really struggling right now. I don't think I'm going to have any problems doing my 10,000 steps today. My name's Jenny and this is Steph. Um, I've been in the Red Cross for four years and Steph has been in the Red Cross for about four months. <laughs> yeah. So pretty new to it all. A little all. bit different. <laughs> We're just on our way to deliver a food box in County Durham. A family is in need. They're having to isolate um, due to COVID. So they're stuck in for 10 days at the moment and are awaiting home testing kits. So we are going to help them out with some food. The food boxes we get come from local food banks within our areas, so they're pretty much donated to us. We've yeah. got a really good relationship with the food banks and they provide a cross section of, of foods to support people in, in the short term basically. A bit of a tight squeeze, but that's us here. Flex my muscles for the camera. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hey. <laughs> so we've just dropped these off, and then this is the lady here. We're dropping them off. So she can come get those now while we uh, piece down back a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 My name's Izzy, uh, I'm an emergency response volunteer here in the north of Scotland and as one of a small group of volunteers um, we've been delivering PPE all around the highlands uh, up here and delivering to care homes, to care in the community and the community extends to wild, remote and beautiful places like this. Doing it just trying to make a little bit of a difference um, to people's lives uh, especially in some of these very rural areas here in the north of Scotland. Well, at least the weather's not too bad. The forecast was really terrible uh, for the heavy rain, but it's not too bad. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that would be good. Where am I taking it? Keep down, going down the back. So this is us inside the PPE hub and um, this is Fiona who's in here who works here if you'd like to come out and have a wee chat Fiona. Well I've worked here myself since last October. I was actually furloughed. Really really good service. It's an emergency supply you know if people maybe run out of things they can just email, phone and we have a good supply here of gloves, disposable aprons, face masks, face visors and of course your hand gel. It's really been a godsend for me because if not I would be sitting at home on furlough. So I thoroughly enjoy it and you get to meet people. These PPA drives are amazing. Imagine this, right? I'm about to get ready, I'm about to do some cooking and making some food after a long day of doing some prep work and then all of a sudden we get a call out. This is what's so amazing about emergency response, our volunteers, staff members, we can all drop things at a moment's notice to be able to really go out and help. We're on the way to a house fire um, that is in the Wiltshire area. Um, it's been a 
domestic fire. We won't um, be going with our, with our GoPro um, straight into the incident, unfortunately. And so let's just make sure that, again, everyone have an opportunity just to sort of, for us to focus on what we need to do. I'm Tim. Hello, I'm Chris. So we attended a house fire. So a, a, an older couple had had a house fire and we were called out by a fire service. Um, because the house is uninhabitable this evening and therefore they needed support in finding somewhere to stay. Oh, what a afternoon. Really good. Two of my new volunteers um, have responded to this evening, um, which is absolutely great. Getting ourselves now back to the station. Uh, we will refuel up the van. We will get everything ready and sorted uh, for the next call out. I am on my way down to Doncaster, um, courtesy of Storm Crystal. So some of the volunteers are there now. A lot of them are helping out um, with sandbags or door knocking, um, making sure people are okay if they need anything. Obviously, it can be quite scary, and you know, this it's people's homes as well. I'm Keith, I'm a volunteer for South Yorkshire Emergency Response. Uh, I joined in January last year after the actual floods affected me quite close to my house in Doncaster. Just giving something back to people that are in worse place than I am really. Right, we're just going to have a look and see how the flooding is doing. Oh yeah, I see. Oh, I definitely should have put wellies on, shouldn't I? Yeah. So where right. stood the where the blue dot is? Don't know, sir. Please, yeah. That's where the river normally is. So I'm just currently driving a little bit further into um, Fish Lake just to kind of see what's happened overnight. Um, probably see a little bit uh, potentially of the houses that are kind of sandbagged up some of the residents. A lot of the residents have been walking around and having a look at the river and I think just checking the levels obviously a lot of them are really concerned after being flooded in 2019. So yeah very high level there is a lot of people here in their high-vis jackets so that'll be the flood wardens um council members I'm very blown away <laughs> right now see areas like this where they've kind of experienced it or starting to get better prepared now. This is how it's looking. The flooding actually hasn't got too bad because it really was kind of touch and go and obviously there's still risks Um, situations like this can change really really quickly and we're obviously just here to help as much as we can. Hello, my name's Sam. I'm an emergency response volunteer with the British Red Cross and today I thought I'd just show you a little bit of what we're doing. Um, we're going to the QE hospital today in Gateshead and today we're going to go and drop off some sanitary products. There we go. Shampoo. Shower gel. Lavender. Whitening toothpaste. A toothbrush. And some deodorant. I know what they're doing on the wards is they're making these little packs. Oh, thank you. They're making these little packs which are going in the bathrooms because obviously they can't have too many people using the same stuff. So they're giving it to the people that are staying there, which is going to really, really help them and benefit them because it gives them a bit more independence. It gives them something that they have to wash themselves if they, if they don't have that stuff already or if they don't have anyone that can bring it to them from home. I'm here with the two nurses from the QE from Ward 4. Got the parcels, going to load them onto that. So that is our two ladies going in with all the hygiene products. We're not allowed in because we're not hospital staff, but they're all in there getting themselves all sorted. So that was a really successful mission. I joined British Red Cross back in May because of COVID. I wasn't very happy about lockdown. I didn't like it, as I'm sure many people didn't. But I thought, you know what, what better way to be proactive than to go out and volunteer? And that really, really helped me out because it gave me 
such good experience that I then put on my CV. But not just that, it made me feel good about myself. Now, back in college a few years ago, I suffered really, really badly with mental health. And for one reason or another, I had to leave college. Then COVID hit, I was back at the home and didn't have my job anymore, which was really unfortunate. I'd have never saw myself here today doing this, driving a brand new Land Rover Defender or an ambulance or any of the other basic kit we work with back when I suffered from mental health. I genuinely would never have imagined it. And the fact that I can do that and the fact that the British Red Cross support me to do that is a massive thing. And it really, really helps me. It's helped with my self-esteem, it's helped with my confidence, it's helped with being able to speak to people, it's helped with anxiety, it's, it's got me out of the house. And it, I've made some friends through this as well. And it's been a really, really great opportunity. It's giving people help that they need. what it's been like with Covid living somewhere so remote. Well, it, in some ways it's been easier because we've been more remote, but my husband has dementia, my daughter has Down syndrome and is partially sighted, so we've absolutely had to um, isolate and, and be shielding this, well, for over a year now. Wow, that's tough. So, you and the shopping, the postman are the only people that have been here. It's great to be involved and have an opportunity to be able to be useful. Well, God bless you. Doing a wonderful job. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I am going to deliver a food box in Durham. Um, So this is someone who is really quite vulnerable, they live alone um, and can't afford their, their food shop or anything at the minute. I'm in charge of about 20 volunteers and so when we get the calls in um, I see who's available to help out um, or I go and do it, whichever, or sometimes it takes a couple of people depending on the job. We really couldn't manage without our volunteers, so we're really lucky to have such a good group. to go and deliver them their food box um, they requested to stay off camera so I'll not be able to grab that bit <sighs> yeah delivered him his food box just quickly asked him if there was anything else he kind of needed but I think he's been advised um, by the rest of our team um, as to what I, what other support and what longer term support he can get um, so I think he's alright for the minute hopefully that will help him out for a while um, as I say, a lot of people are really struggling right now and, you know, this this is not an unusual case. Um, 
minutes yeah hopefully we've helped him and made him just feel a little bit better for a while not have to worry about when he's next gonna eat because no one wants to live their lives worrying about where their next meal is going to come from. We've uh, been deployed up to the Blythe area in Northumberland to support a gentleman who is uh, isolating. Um, he does have a few other issues that he needs support with which as an organisation we are supporting him with that in the Community Connector Scheme. Unfortunately with the pandemic and the restrictions a person like Tony, it's it's really, really affected quite badly. We'll pop along and, and see how he is tonight. Looks like he's in the lights are on. I'll just grab the door. Watch the door. Hello. Hey Tony. Hi, I'm Jenny and this is Liam. We've come from the Red Cross, you know, we mentioned we were yeah. calling oh, thank you. with a food box for you. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Good, how are you doing? Uh, but at the dear. Good. Yeah, mental health stuff. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. So you're managing all right. You, you, I, I know a colleague of mine, Michael, rings you every week. Yeah, yeah. Is that right? A bit of oh, well-being support? Oh, been great. I, I, I couldn't have got through this with them. Oh, that's really nice of you. Yeah. Tony, yeah, that's really nice. Lovely to speak to you. Can you manage to lift that yourself? Yeah, they're, they're coming down with us. You can manage, right. Yeah. Okay, lovely okay, to speak to you. you. See you later. Okay, See you, Tony. Bye. Bye. It's Tuesday evening and we're heading down to Gateshead Food Bank. They're open for an hour um, once a week. So if we kind of run out, we need some additional provisions, we can, we can pop down. So Steph and Liam are in the other vehicle. From a Red Cross point of view in the northeast, we've supported, oh, it must be over a thousand, a thousand people since we set up the COVID support line. Basically doing the food drops, medication collections, we've done some hospital transport details for staff. We have been really lucky um, having the Land Rovers to help us get through the pandemic. Hi, my name's Rachel and I've been volunteering at Gatehead Food Bank for about seven years now. Um, I really enjoy coming here. I get to meet a wide variety of people. Some latest figures that we've got for the month of February is that we've received 4.9 tons of donations from wow. the members of the public in the local area. We get we get donated all types of things, and um, one of the reasons for the food bank is helping out the most vulnerable people in your community, in your town, or your city. Okay, so we're just going to have a quick look through a food box. So this is an example of what um, we hand out as the Red Cross, what these guys here put together for us. So let's have a little look. So everything is always non-perishable. That's got a long shelf life. Yeah. Also soap. Get it in ah. So we've got like a selection of tea and coffee and long life milk, long life juice, deodorant, fish, vegetables. Oh brilliant. I know it's interesting to see because obviously we hand them out but I've never actually went through a box. Good morning. We are on route for a very busy day today. We've got a couple of errands we're going to be running and then we're going to be looking at going to our primary care network site. Today we're going to be working alongside our NHS colleagues to help deliver the vaccination. I'm responsible for a team of Red Cross volunteers that are inside and today I'm going to take you through the vaccination site to just show you what it's like when you come to a vaccination site and what to expect because there is a lot of people out there that are quite worried, so let's take that worry away and let's walk through the site. Have you had any symptoms of COVID within the last 10 days? No, I haven't. Thank you very much. Have you had any symptoms at all in the last 10 days? Perfect. Will do. Thank you very much. Hi, Jordan. How is it all going today? Yeah, it's good. It's actually my first shift today, oh. um, so I'm quite interested to see how it's going. Mm -hmm. There's been a steady stream of people into the centre, 
and I'm just directing them into the right lanes to get them uh, vaccinated as quickly as possible. Lane Boy. 9, please. I don't think I'm going to have any problem doing my 10,000 steps today. <laughs> no, that's one of the best things about doing this. Thank Getting you. them 10,000 steps in, I was loving it. Ah, oh, yeah, <laughs> back and forth, back and forth. So. We've got a lot of people coming in today. So what our volunteers tend to do, we have to the right of me, we have volunteers directing them into the different lanes to get their details registered. Then behind me, you'll see other, other volunteers putting people into a separate lane. That is then to get them ready to go through into their vaccination. So if you follow me around, I'm going to show you what it looks like on the other side. It's important to keep everyone moving through the system so we can get them their vaccination as quick as possible. So we've just walked through where everyone's getting their vaccinations. I'm Lara and this is Julie. Hi, so Julie's yeah. going to go through a question. Is your first dose today? Yes, it is. The very yeah. first one. Yeah. 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 Okay, all right. Then. What are, we, what are we doing? We're stamping the vaccine cards so that people know what brand of the vaccine they had and the date so they know when they need to come back. One, two, three, four, five. How's it going, Sir Chris? Yeah, it's been very busy today, um, but it's been um, really good. So we've, you know, and they're very thankful. All of them are really thankful to it. Hardly ever anybody doesn't say thank you for what you're doing, so it's really appreciated. It's helped me deal with COVID in my own way because it's kept me busy, and I think that's really important for my uh, well-being as well. Thank yeah. you very much. That's easy. Okay, bye. Stepping out into the sunlight is absolutely amazing. You spend all day in, in the vaccination site, really helping people. You come out, the sun is shining, and you know what? it reminds you that better days are coming and we are getting to the end of this fight. <laughs> 